treatment strategy very seriously. Make sure when you're going out there, you um, wear your mask, and then when you come in, you wash your hands and make sure that everything is okay. Don't go and contract the disease because it's a dangerous place. So please make sure you keep safe. And um, I'm going to just get on with it. We continue with a series of um, anxiety disorder because the era that we are in at the moment, everybody's anxious. We don't even know what is happening. We are waiting for vaccination. We are waiting for um, some medication. They said um, remdesivir or something. That medication is something that um, Americans have bought and um, they are trying to use it to curb the spread of the disease. Um, so let's make sure that we keep safe. Um, we are going to deal with anxiety as of the moment um, from my book, from the pages 105 and 106. We are going to be talking about social anxiety disorder. We are continuing from the, um, the parts 2A and 2B. So this is going to be part 3, A and B, and we continue from the series till we finish with all the anxiety disorders. So we're going to be looking at um, pages 105 and 106 of my book. Um, we will be talking about social anxiety disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, and then post-traumatic stress disorder. So let's quickly see what is happening right here so that we know exactly what we are in and then we get on with it. So I hope you click the notification bell and then subscribe so that as soon as the series are ongoing and new um, parts are coming in A's and B's, you get it and then you continue where we stopped or where we ended. So social anxiety disorder. Social anxiety disorder, in abbreviation SAD, S -A -D, also known as social phobia, describes an intense fear and avoidance of negative public scrutiny, public embarrassment, humiliation, or social interaction. So which means that these individuals have the fear, have the phobia of going out. They are not very outgoing people. They are introverts. They are not extroverts. They have that fear that people will be looking at them. People will be talking ill about them. And people will be watching them in some kind of way. And they will be imagining all sort of things in a very negative sense of it. So which means that when you get out there, you're gonna be feeling very uncomfortable if you have that social anxiety disorder. Because you have so many things running into your brain, running through your brain. It's all negative. Because if it's positive, you won't stay home when you have got something to do in town. So some of the kids, some of the adults, you know, you name it, most of them have it, but in sort of minute sort of incidents or minute kind of levels. But if it exceeds that normality, that normal sort of way, which lingers for maybe six or more months that is getting to become a problem, then you need to consult a physician. You need a professional to come in and, and help you because it's going to be something that will really put you down. It's going to knock down your confidence and you wouldn't even be able to even secure a job. Because imagine when you have a job and you are going to that job and there are a whole lot of people, maybe it's a factory that have got a whole lot of people. What is going to be running through your mind before you get there? So you end up not going. So it's a very sort of, sort of serious um, emergency that we need to attend to. So let's continue with this. This fear 
can be specific to particular social situation, such as public speaking, or more typically, is experienced in most of all social interactions. So, some of the people out there have the phobia of speaking to people out there of, of public speaking. Let's say you are invited to go and speak about a subject or a topic, maybe women's right or social inclusion or any other topics out there that is very, very relevant to what is happening right now. And if you have this phobia, it means that you won't have the edge, you won't have the, the confidence you wouldn't have, if you have that social anxiety disorder, you wouldn't have that confidence, that kick, to even go out there to stand in front of that number of people to speak to them. You know, anyway, let me put it this way. Every individual has got an element of social anxiety disorder, but it's not to that extent that it's going to overwhelm them to the stand that if they've got something doing or they've got a public speaking or if they've got a social event, they won't do it. They will, they, they will have that sort of tension. They'll be tensed, right? They'll have that stress and that stress is going to kick in their confidence so that they'll be able to deliver. But if it goes beyond that limit, it means that it's getting to that clinical state the way by you need support. You need some sort of professional advice. So we all have it, but when it's overwhelming, when it goes beyond the normal phase, because everybody has got a little bit of phobia when maybe you are invited to go and speak in public, you've got a little bit of stress here and there, you've got some sort of anxiety here and there, you've got some tension here and there, but as soon as you start your speech, everything fizzles out automatically. But those of you that are out there, that is a huge sort of stumbling block that you can't even kick or flatten it and move on with your life. It means you need support. Go and get it checked out. Go and get some support from professionals. Visit your GP. Talk to your GP about it. They will give you a psychologist or they'll give you a, a psychiatrist to go through all the sort of appraisals and you know assessment and evaluation so that you get some sort of help to get over it. Otherwise, you'll be locked up in your own house. You'll be locked down in your own house because you don't want to go into the public area to even think about people looking at you and lurking danger out there. You don't want to do that. So that is it. So social interaction, they don't like it. But if it's overwhelming, if it's too much, if it crosses that deadline, that line whereby you can't handle it, then it means please you need some support, some help. Because everybody has a little bit of that. But if it goes beyond that level, then it means you really need a clinical professional support. Let's carry on with that. Social anxiety often manifest specific physical symptoms, including blushing, sweating, and difficulty in speaking. So these are some of the physical symptoms. You, you, you blush. If you're a white guy, you, you see the rush of blood on your face, sometimes blue or red in your, on your face. Um, you sweat, you start sweating your armpits and all that will be sweaty and difficult in speaking. Sometimes you'll be shaking while speaking. But those of us that has got just a tiny eye of it, you go through this, but in about five minutes time, you'll be okay and you'll be able to continue with your engagement and your activity. But some of you out there go through this in a very difficult position and they can't handle it. Difficulty in speaking, they will shake. They, they wouldn't, if, it, if they know, and if you know that you are, sorry, you are out there with that sort of clinical condition that is overwhelming, 
then it means you have to go out and have a check out. So um, let's continue in the part B and let's see how it goes because it's really a serious thing to, to you know, to, um, to examine.